the pitch that I made for the how to supercharge historical society projects with OS with OHM and open data. And as I was going through the presentation and getting ready for today, I realized what I'm going to deliver is really my my kind of first time pitch of this presentation, just about the basics, not much about supercharging. To, I also left out very good looking audience. So what I would like you all to do right now is kind of close your eyes. You're like, oh, so touchy feeling. He is from California. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maggie, you do not have to wake up. But I want you to close your eyes and imagine that you are part of a historical society. You have spent your time in libraries, calling archives, having meetings that are not nearly well as attended as state of the map. And and you're you're trying to figure out how do I do all this stuff. And you, you may be you know, an old school archivist or a preservationist, and ask yourself, what do people in those types of things need to know about something like Open Historical Map? But also, they may never have heard of Open Street Map. So, all right, everybody, out of your trance, and here we go. So, why do you, my assembled historical society, want to use Open Historical? Kind of self explanatory for mapping history, but why? Well, the first point is cost you nothing. And then hopefully it fits in with all of the type of things that you already do. It helps support group activities, takes the work that you've already done and gives a new format to show them in kind of a dynamic way. It's built for digital data and it helps you tell a real story in the context of where you used to be. Not the modern street names, not the modern buildings. When you say someone's grandmother lived at such and such your street, you want to have a map that shows the grocery store she went to or where you where she worked. And it also will give you credit so you can see her name in action. So first things to know, anyone can make a map. Anyone here? Anyone here can make a map. Um, but you don't have to start from scratch. There's already a lot of data out there. There's already a lot of information. You probably already have like lists of old addresses and where things were. And we have lots of support, just like that picture there. Um, we have online resources to teach you about OpenStreetMap and Open Historical Map. We also have people you can ask almost 24 7. And the last thing is you can kind of think of this is a really great place to take all your existing information and kind of build a scrapbook. And I'm gonna explain how you do that. First, before I do that, I wanna talk about what OHM is built on and why you should trust it as a solid platform. First of all, it's built on top of open street map technology. Stack. So that means all the software, all the entities, there's a huge information infrastructure built around this amazing thing called open street map. It's kind of like a self-made map. Anyone can edit it, you ought to go check it out today. Over 7 million people are already there. It's used by all the companies you know. You've probably seen it on a site you know. They do great. They use OpenStreetMap. And you can see it. Well, I covered it up. Over in the lower corner, a lot of times it will say credit to OpenStreetMap. And you can get started immediately. So I want you to know it's built on a solid technical foundation, globally scalable. It's going to be here for the duration. And what's different? Well, I'm gonna show you a little bit. I'm gonna focus on the historic Ballard neighborhood in Seattle. But OHN has a lot less map. So that's a blessing and a curse. The curse is that there's nothing there. The blessing is, it gives people a lot to do. And it's easy to add stuff. And we love old stuff. OpenStreetMap does not want you to map what's not on the ground today, which is perfect for their purposes and kind of gives us a reason to live. And we've got a time slider. And I'm going to talk about this inspector. Inspector is just kind of what tells you information about what's on the map. And we've taken what OpenStreetMap has and added a few key features. To make it easy for you to add images. There's a little Wikipedia blurb in between there. And then you can link to your prior works and, and information. So maybe there's a site about a single building. You can link to it there. Maybe there's your historical society. Uh, website that you want to put on there. Maybe there's other amateur historical societies that you want to link to that are relevant to the history of your neighborhood or where you are. 
And I also want to point out inside those map, inside those pictures, is a lot of information. So this picture says Ballard Savings and Loan Building. That's this building here, it's down structure, very beautiful facility, different businesses in the day. But what else is in that picture? Again, try to build the context of your neighborhood. There's an old clock, there's a hardware store, his name I couldn't make out, there's another business, there's a whole ass. And you can start building this in a trolley one. And once you put that information into the historical map, you can then search for it. So say it is the Ballard Hardware Store. You can search and find out more about Ballard Hardware Store and maybe have that image there as well. So again, every resource you have for historical information becomes a basis for expanding and improving the context. Wonderful thing is you can do this bit by bit, one thing at a time, or, uh, oh, I'll get to that. Or you can work as a team and I'll hold that thought so I'll come back to it. The other thing that's cool is one thing that this will enable you to do is after you do all of your work. What, what's going on with the Portland historical society? What are they showing for Portland at the same time? You can go scroll the map down, or maybe Edmonds, um, or you want to see what's going on at a regional level. And so you can see at this time in 1889, Washington was still a territory. Scroll back a little ways, and you've got it's part of the Oregon Territory. Again, context. What are the old routes? What are the trading routes? What cities were more important? hundred years ago. We have the tasking manager, which is a product created by another OSM organization called the Humanitarian Open Street Map Team. And they have built this tool so that we put them work together. So you pick a project, a thematic project for your neighborhood or for your historical society, divide up the territory and have everybody map together. You can track the progress and now have people conflict with each other, which is pretty awesome. And here are some examples, old projects, or projects you might want to do. Uh, everyone has an old city directory. That's a bunch of text. Amazing tools are available today for extracting information, geographic information out of that text. If you're not as daunting as it might seem, machines can read the docs. We can organize the data and structure it and import it. So we're here to help you with those sorts of things. You can look at ads, old photos. I am really excited about the opportunities for thematic maps. So maybe here in Richmond, which started out as a Huguenot uh, settlement way back when, maybe you have traces of the Huguenot settlers today, or through time. Um, the other thing is there are huge sections of cobblestone roads here in Richmond, and like there are people who, who are already out there mapping where the cobblestone roads are. This is a way to preserve it and combine it with other information. And then there's micro mapping. So you take that savings and loan building. What are the last eight businesses over there? I don't know, but somebody does and somebody cares. And it's in the history and you can extract it. We even have data types, special data type in OHM to help you look at the chronology of any object in the map. And I do want to say one thing. If you ever ask, how can I help my historical society? We have lots of ideas, lots. Now, what if you don't really know how to get started? Well, Sanborn Maps, most historical societies know about Sanborn Maps. We have a new partner here, oldinsurancemaps.net, that can help you get that map online quickly and easily so that your team can start extracting the information out of it. Pretty awesome. Again, pretty turnkey. You can get up and running quickly. So next steps, visit our site. Check out some of the examples. I'm gonna add a micro and mapping or a couple of examples there. And then reach out to me. We're here to help, always ready to present. I'll send some henchmen, like wealthy. Um, and don't hesitate to tell us how we can work to make your site and your operations better. And that's what I have, that's my pitch. Okay, tough audience, feedback. Yeah.